Hi everybody, welcome to the Blue Collar Beer Gourmet. I'm Chris, I'm the Blue Collar Beer Gourmet. I like to drink craft beer, I like to review craft beer, and I don't like to pay a lot of money doing it. So the beers that I review on this channel usually come in around the $2 price range. And that is the case for today's selection. I paid $1.79 for a 12 ounce bottle from the brewer known as Omission Brewing Company. This is their IPA, Bold and Hoppy as it's known. Uh, the deal with Omission Brewery uh, is they are a gluten-free brewery, or I, I should say gluten-removed brewery. If you look right here on the label, you will see crafted to remove gluten. The quick disclaimer they give is beer fermented from barley, a grain containing gluten, and crafted to remain gluten. The gluten content of this beer cannot be verified, and this beer may contain gluten. Every brew is tested for gluten. See your bottle results at www.omissiontest.com. So there you have it. Also, what's nice about this is that they have nutrition information right there. We've got calories, we've got carbs, protein, and fat. That's something that you rarely see. Another thing that's on this bottle that I like a lot is a brood on date. And uh, this particular IPA is four months old. IPA purists will say that that's too old. I know, I know. Anything more than uh, anything more than 90 days for an IPA for you IPA purists is too old. Anything more than 30 days for the super purist is too old. But um, I, I'm, I'm thinking four months is, is perfectly acceptable. Uh, four months old is perfectly acceptable for an IPA. Uh, this particular IPA, quick stats on it. It has a 6.7 ABV. Normally American IPAs usually come in between 5.5 and 7.5, so it's well within range. It has 65 IBUs. Uh, normally American IPAs come in between 40 and 70 uh, IBUs, so it's towards the higher end of the bitterness scale. Eleven of my friends on Untap gave this beer a cumulative score of 3.32, and 22,000 of us gave it a cumulative score of 3.29. Uh, those who watched the last review will know that um, those are actually much better scores than the uh, the lager that I uh, from them that I reviewed last. Uh, so this is actually the second in a, a four part series. There'll be a pale ale, and I believe the next one is, the fourth one is a blonde ale, I'm pretty certain. Um, in the same vein, we're discussing the reviewing. Um, Bear Advocate had 220 uh, reviews, giving a cumulative score of 3.46, which on their scale is okay. This beer has won two gold, one silver, and one bronze award. The hops used in it were Millennium Summit and Cascade, and Premium Two Roll Malt and Caramel Malt was used to make it. So there you have the breakdown, gang. And uh, I do have a friend who suffers from celiac disease. I've seen what can happen when she uh, gets gluten. I see the anaphylactic response that she gets, the, the allergic response, as it were. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate of anybody who's trying to make the effort to uh, figure out how to do gluten-free beer. We may not be there yet. You know, It may take, may take a, a few more years to make a good gluten-free a beer, a beer that we can definitely say is gluten-free, but I like the fact that people are making the effort and at least trying. So, anyway, that that's the breakdown on that. And as I said, a dollar seventy-nine for this twelve-ounce bottle. So they're not only making gluten-free beer, but they're trying to bring it in at an affordable price range. All right, keeping the caps for my friend. He's going to do some kind of art project with those. So Kelly, if you're watching. That's one more cap that's added to uh, the package I'll be sending you eventually. All right, let's see how this bad boy pours. And I am pouring this into my Tanea Creek IPA glass. Quick uh, shout out to Tanea Creek. If you're here in Vegas and you find yourself in downtown Las Vegas on a Tuesday night, meander over to Tanea Creek, slap down six bucks, you're going to get a good glass just like this. It's going to be full of house beer. Take the glass back when you're finished with it. Slap down five bucks, you're going to get refills for five bucks. What's more, take the glass home with you. Wash it, bring it back next Tuesday, more five dollar refills. As long as you can keep the glass in one piece, you're going to be drinking five dollar refills out of it every Tuesday that you bring the glass in. So, can't beat that deal with a stick. And for those of you who are wondering about this strange design, this is in fact an American IPA glass. So, there you have it. There's also stemmed IPA which is supposed to be used for IPAs of international variety, but uh, this apparently is a and is an American IPA glass, so there you have it. Going to do a quick beard wipe, see what we can come up with. Not much. 
Uh, not much on the beard wipe. So maybe I'm just going to have to stick my big schnoz right directly into this and figure out what we got going. And in case you hadn't noticed, this this uh, head ain't going nowhere. And I'm going to describe that as, um, I'm going to say medium high carbonation. Lots and lots of tiny little bubbles. Put my schnoz in and see what we got. I can smell hops, but it's not overly hops. It's, 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 there's not an overly pronounced aroma to this. A little bit of hops, a little bit of sweetness. Um, not entirely... Uh, it's almost like a fruity smell. Um, a sweet fruity smell at that. So uh, I'm just going to quit talking and start drinking. Cheers. Well, gang, if you remember the last video, which was the omission lager, <clears throat> this is scores ahead of the lager. Um, now, I will say, I have to say, it's not quite as bitter as I was expecting with the 65 IBUs, and I'm wondering if somehow the gluten removal doesn't sort of temper the, uh, the, the hoppy bitterness, but it's still... If, if we're making strides in gluten-free beer, or gluten-removed beer, I gotta say, this is probably the best gluten, one of the better gluten IPAs that I've had. Uh, now, um, New Belgium also makes gluten-y, gluten-y for free ale. I forget what kind of ale it is, whether it's an, I don't think it's an IPA. I'm pretty sure this is my first gluten-free or gluten-removed IPA, and uh, I gotta say, this is some good stuff here, guys. Is this going to be in my top 10 favorite IPAs? No. But is this in my top 3 um, favorite uh, gluten-free beers? In fact, maybe right behind uh, gluten -y? I would say so. Yeah, this is, if you're looking for a gluten-free alternative, and, uh, yeah, this is the second of, of four reviews. Um, I'm, I have, I have big hopes for uh, the Pale Ale and the Blonde Ale, because uh, this is a good beer. We've got a low mouthfeel. No alcohol burn, which is a little surprising considering the 6.5. I thought maybe there'd be just a little bit, but there, there really is no alcohol burn. Um, <clears throat> hoppy bitterness, uh, almost, uh, but but it's, it's the hoppy bitterness is, is almost, um, well, I keep using the word tempered, but uh, I got to find, I'm going to have to go to the thesaurus and find a, a synonym for tempered because I keep using that word all the time, but I'll go ahead and use it for now. It is tempered, it seems. But, uh, all in all, still a good beer. It has a great flavor, and, um, I feel more than confident giving this a 3.75. And that's in a bottle. Those of you who watch this channel regularly know that I'm prone to giving an extra 0 0.25 to, uh, a beer that shows up in a can. So, just shy of a 4.0 for a, a beer that sh arrived in a bottle. That ain't too bad at all. So guys, if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, drink good beer. Don't break the bank doing it. Cheers.